Do you like change? Most of us don't. Change is hard. And yet what do we know to be true? Change is the only constant in life. So when it comes to change, we could keep being surprised and disoriented by the changes that come and even grumble through them, or maybe there's another way. Did you know that Jesus' first word to us was change? In Mark's gospel, it's usually translated as repent, but the word itself is the Greek word metanoia, which quite literally means to change your mind. Jesus' first word was change, and mind, heart, soul change at that. You see, there is another way. The Jesus story invites us to see change not only as something that happens externally around us like changes in our jobs, relationships, health, country, home, but to see part of the point of it all as the constant change in us, mind, heart, soul change at that. So how do we grow through change? At Salt House, we're exploring how to metanoia, how to grow through the changes we face by paying attention to our lives. Noticing the hooks that come from God. We call these hooks kairos moments. Kairos means time in Greek. Kairos moments are moments of significance, whether big or small, when God has our attention, that if we step toward them can lead us into change. And we do that by asking two questions. The first we ask is, what is God saying to me? And then what am I going to do about it? We hope to continue becoming people who pay better attention, who recognize the prevalence of Kairos, who hear God, who listen to our lives with grace, with patience, with humor, and engage in our world. We will all keep living through change, but will we be changed? At Salt House, we try. Whatever chunk of change you are facing now, let's grow and cross over that threshold together. All right, as we do settle into this time and space, I invite you just to take a moment to close your eyes, become aware of your breath. Roll your shoulders back. Feel the weight of your buns in your seat, your feet on this floor in this space. Just let yourself show up here. God, we are here, we are paying attention. We are listening together. So as this video and as last week again sets us up, we are now firmly in fall. Uh, Friday was the fall equinox, so we are, we are here in fall, and we're also in this chunk of change sermon series together, paying attention to the changes around us and listening to them for the chances to let God lead us into change as well. So last Sunday, we challenged, uh, we challenged, I challenged you, we challenged each other to pay attention to Kairos, to pay attention to these moments of significance that happen in our lives, situations where we encounter something, where we recognize that something deeper is happening beneath the surface, those moments and circumstances of our lives. And I wonder if you were here, if you heard that, did, did you pay attention to Kairos during your week? Anyone, anyone kind of be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna pay attention to this. See two people, awesome. Two, <laughs> two, three, I got three, okay. Which is okay, uh, it is a brand new day and uh, you still have that chance. This fall, this is actually a practice that we're gonna keep holding on to, paying attention to Kairos, to our lives, growing in our sensitivity to hearing God and responding and to hear more um, about how we set that up. If you missed last week's sermon again, please go and listen. Our little series trailer um, really gives a good summary, but to get more in depth about what Kairos is, how we listen for that, go and check out that sermon either via video or podcast online. So last week we also named how our time in worship here is never just about me getting up and giving you something interesting or entertaining to think about, ta-da, and then go home. Like that's never the, the point of why we gather, but Sunday morning, the way we sculpt this experience is actually to be one of an experience, to experience the sacred mystery of God and life in this time that we share, and a time also to practice, to actually practice paying attention to our lives and practice the love that Jesus demonstrates for us. And so this morning, our time now, today, is absolutely that. It's an experience set up to be a practice for us 
to listen to our lives, to listen to God, and to do that by listening to a passage from the Bible through the practice of Lectio Divina. Dun, dun, dun. So you may be familiar with it. We've done it here before. If you're new, newer here, Lectio Divina, it's Latin for holy word or divine reading. And it's a practice that's been around since the third century. So just a little while. It's been around for a little while. Uh, it was, the process was formalized in the 12th century and involves rereading a section of the Bible, listening to the words of scripture and listening for a word or a phrase that gets our attention, then prayerfully holding that word and looking for connections to our life now. Just saying, God, what are you saying? What are you saying in this? If this is stirring me, if this is resonating for me. So doing this practice, reading and listening to the Bible in this way, it affirms how we believe that Scripture is not just a static, one-dimensional text, but it's still really alive and kicking today, too. So in this fall series, as we listen for God in our lives, God can be heard and experienced in this living, breathing, ancient book that we, that we call the Bible. Even when we read passages that we've read before, we will hear it in a different way because as people who are living through change and being changed, we, are, we hear it differently because we always find ourselves in a different place than we were the last time we read it or even where we were compared to last week. So we'll hear and experience fresh things every time we read scripture, which if you think about it is actually quite amazing. Our reading today is from Luke's Gospel. For folks who are listening in online, we're going to do the message version of Luke 7, 11 through 17. Again, Luke 7, 11 through 17. And in this passage, Jesus and the crowd who is with them, they're traveling and they're heading into the city of Nain, which is five miles southwest of Nazareth. And we'll just see what happens as they approach the city. As we listen, I invite you to keep that S hook that you received handy. Uh, If you don't have one, that's okay too, but just to have that in your hand. This fall, we're going to keep passing them out every Sunday as we gather, grounding us in this practice of paying attention to how God tries to get our attention, how God tries to hook us in so many ways throughout our day and within our lives. So keep it handy now just as a touchstone as we go through this of how God speaks to us in the midst of also listening to the Bible. So let's begin. So the first step, there's four steps, and the first step of Lectio is reading. So we're just going to read the text, staying in that place. Um, Just be connected to your breath and kind of aware of holding this space, attentive. On this first time of reading through, you're just listening to it, getting a feel for what this text is. I invite you to um, listen with your eyes closed if that's comfortable for you. Also, we have it printed on the bulletin insert if you are a visual person. You can also pull it out next time for the second reading, but just know that that's a resource for you. We're not going to put it on the screen today just to listen instead if you are able to do that. So here we go. Luke 7, 11 through 17. Breathe deeply and just listen to what this text has to say to us. Not long after that, Jesus went to the village Nain, His disciples were with him, along with quite a large crowd. As they approached the village gate, they met a funeral funeral procession. A woman's only son was being carried out for burial, and the mother was a widow. When Jesus saw her, his heart broke. He said to her, don't cry. Then he went over and touched the coffin. The pallbearers stopped. He said, young man, I tell you, get up. The dead son sat up and began talking. Jesus presented him to his mother. They all realized they were in a place of holy mystery, that God was at work among them. They were quietly worshipful and then noisily grateful, calling out among themselves, God is back, looking to the needs of his people. The news of Jesus spread all through the country. Now this next time that we listen again, I invite you to listen for a word or phrase that just touches your heart, that gets something that gets our attention. That's what we're listening for, just one word or phrase. And if you are a more visual person, do pull out that bulletin insert if you want to see the words. Otherwise, you can just keep your eyes closed. Um, Don't expect lightning to strike around a particular word, but just something that kind of shimmers for you or that you feel curious or stirred by. 
When the word or phrase, when you find that, just gently recite it, repeat it, reflect on it during the silence that will follow this reading. So here it is again. Not long after that, Jesus went to the village Nain. His disciples were with him, along with quite a large crowd. As they approached the village gate, they met a funeral procession. A woman's only son was being carried out for burial, and the mother was a widow. When Jesus saw her, his heart broke. He said to her, don't cry. Then he went over and touched the coffin. The pallbearers stopped. He said, young man, I tell you, get up. The dead son sat up and began talking. Jesus presented him to his mother. They all realized they were in a place of holy mystery, that God was at work among them. They were quietly worshipful and then noisily grateful, calling out among themselves, God is back, looking to the needs of his people. The news of Jesus spread all through the country. If you are willing, I invite you just to share out loud the word or phrase that is speaking to you, that's touching your heart. Just the word, no commentary, just kind of share that out loud. Broke. 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 Noisily grateful. Noisily grateful. Presented. Presented. Jesus brokenhearted, his heart broke. Mm -hmm. Holy, mystery. Holy mystery. God is back. Mm. God is back. Get up. Mm. Get up is what got me too. God is amongst them. God is amongst them. Mm. Thank you for sharing. So the second step is reflection, to reflect. So we just hold the word that's touched our heart and we ask where the word or phrase touches our life now. As we do this, don't be afraid of distractions or busy brain. Uh, I know that happens for me. But memories and thoughts that come up, they're simply just part of ourselves that when they rise up during Lectio Divina, they're just asking to be given to God along with the rest of ourself, so embrace those things that come up as you hold this word and listen to, listen to those things. The question that we named last week, as well as it's in the video, this is the process of asking that question, God, what are you saying to me? Like this is, you know, this is standing out for me, God, what are you saying in this word? So continue to do this, just repeat the word of the phrase, um, holding that in dialogue with God, listening for why this word grabs our attention today as we hear this text again. I'm gonna have Matt come up and read it this time. And if you're still like, I don't have my word yet, that's okay. Uh, you can pick one out as we go through this time. So just keep repeating that even as you listen. One more time. Not long after that, Jesus went to the village name. His disciples were with him, along with quite a large crowd. As they approached the village gate, they met a funeral pr procession. A woman's only son was being carried out for burial and the mother was a widow. When Jesus saw her, his heart broke. He said to her, don't cry. Then he went over and touched the coffin. The pallbearer stopped. He said, young man, young man, I tell you, get up. The dead son sat up and began talking. Jesus presented him to his mother. They all realized they were in a place of holy mystery, that God was at work among them. They were quiet, fully worshipful, and then noisefully grateful, calling out among themselves, God is back, looking to the needs of his people. The news of Jesus spread all through the country.
Stay connected to what's coming up for you as we move into the third step, which is to respond. It's responding. So the third and final reading for the, is for the purpose of experiencing Christ, calling us to respond. Uh, what is God in this text calling us to do or to become today or this week? It's the second question that we heard in our video that we named last week, asking like, okay, God, what am I going to do about it? If this is what you're saying, what am I going to do? How am I going to live differently in light of this? And that's an answer that may be like, oh yeah, here's something right now that makes sense to me. It might be something that you live into after a while. A lot of these, a lot of the ways in which God speaks to us, it is the slow living it out, not an instantaneous, okay, got it. So just know that it can be something you hold for a while, but it can be the beginnings of something that you hear today or continue to hear um, in the midst of something you've already been hearing from God. But God is always inviting us into transformation, into seeing our lives in a fresh way. So that's why we listen to this response question. How are we invited to do or be differently, to see things differently? So we listen for our our response as we really, as we hear it this, this final time. Not long after that, Jesus went to the village Nain. His disciples were with him along with quite a large crowd. As they approached the village gate, they met a funeral procession. A woman's only son was being carried out for burial, and the mother was a widow. When Jesus saw her, his heart broke. He said to her, don't cry. Then he went over and he touched the coffin. The pallbearer stopped. He said, young man, I tell you, get up. The dead son sat up and began talking. Jesus presented him to his mother. They all realized they were in a place of holy mystery, that God was at work among them. They were quietly worshipful and then noisily grateful, calling out among themselves, God is back, looking to the needs of his people. The news of Jesus spread all through the country. And now we make space to share, to speak. For those who would like to, uh, just share what's coming up for you. You don't have to. Uh, you don't, and also, if you do, you don't have to worry about sounding smart or insightful or being articulate. Um, as you share, you can be brief. I've noticed how you know, our own willingness to speak up of how we're experiencing God, God always uses that to speak to someone else, too. So our own courage in that always ends up being a blessing for someone else. And in in this week that we're having in the world, there's so much just devastation and disaster and just just so much suffering happening in our world right now. So many of us are hungering to hear a word of grace, to know that God is with us. So this is a great way to practice being people who speak that word of grace of God. So let's see together what word or phrase is coming up to you. What have you been noticing about it? You are are invited to respond and name how you are invited, how God's inviting you to respond. So we're going to use a mic just so we can be sure to hear everybody. But again, we'd love to hear what's coming up for you. Got two over there. So I thought of that noisily grateful one. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking about as what I do every day. I'm surrounded by children and a lot of noise makers. I because teach what, elementary yeah. music. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of noise every single day. <laughs> but I'm thinking about like the past like couple of weeks and even just this past week with kindergartners as they're learning how to just be at school. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking about the noise and the giggles and the laughter that comes watching 25 kindergartners do the chicken dance. And like the noise, (laughs) the grateful noise of what they're creating right there is what's getting to me and like looking for the gratefulness in those good noises that are coming from my classroom. 
I love it. Noisily grateful. Kindergarten. Love it. Yep. I just was thinking about um, how much compassion Jesus had for somebody that it seems like nobody knew where they were going, but Jesus knew right where he was supposed to be, and just this great amount of compassion that came for this one person, and everybody saw that, and it's pretty beautiful. Yes. Thank you. Um, what touched me was um, God is back, and mm. um, God never really leaves us, but sometimes our eyes are closed to it, and that sometimes a death opens our eyes um, to things around us. And unfortunately, sometimes you wonder why it takes a death to open our eyes to seeing God all around us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good thing you're wearing your Fitbit. It's good. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of times uh, God, he sends us a message, but a lot of times we don't understand it. And it takes sometimes a while to really look back and say, well, I really didn't understand what he said, but now I understand. Mm. It. And so sometimes it just takes time to sing in and understand really what the message was. Yeah, hindsight. So again. thing that was interesting for me, there were different phrases that came out for me every time, and I experienced it so differently when Matt was reading it, but I was just so struck by, then Jesus went over and touched the coffin, and the pallbearers stopped. So just, just in, in Jesus's touch, how that kind of ceased this movement towards a grave, and I, I just, that just, that just got me in the, in the midst of hurricane devastation that's happening like just when in all the ways in which people are able to stop and like touch and be present how it kind of stops this movement towards death and I think of it in parenting it's like when I'm able to stop and like be present and touch my daughter and be there how that stops the spinning of whatever is spinning and um, but just his the actual touching like that really that last time that's what really got me any others? Final, final chance. So thank you for sharing. It's amazing how rich a text becomes as we spend this time in it and as, as people speak about it. So thank you for sharing your experience, your kairos, your curiosity in this text. So in light of this, um, as we hold that question of how is God inviting us to live and be differently, I would invite you into two specific responses into, into this, uh, one for this morning and then one for the week to come. So first, for this morning, I want to invite you to remember a practice that we started this last Sunday a week ago, and it's something we're going to engage with every Sunday through the fall. Um, you're invited to name Kairos moments to like actually distill it down to like, okay, this is something, a place in my life where God has my attention and I want to pay attention to this and move toward it and ask God, what are you saying in this? So to name Kairos, this is something, this is one I want to name. I shared last week about um, soccer, my daughter playing soccer is a significant Kairos for me for a lot of different ways because like, I, it was my thing growing up, but also like the raging soccer parent on the sidelines coming out of me. I'm like, what's going on with that? So I want to pay attention to that. So, um, so it can be all kinds of different things that come up for us. Um, related, um, I did play in my first adult league soccer game on Friday night. And I can like not lift my thighs, like, <laughs> like it's getting, anyway, it's just, it's awesome. It was, it was fabulous and very humble to be a part of that. Um, so, so this is something we're doing every week, just like what is, what are we paying attention to in our lives? And so that's why we're passing out these S hooks every, 
every Sunday because we remember we're being hooked and then we have the chance to come up and write on these, on either those tables, on these hearts and circles, a word or phrase, and then come and hang up those uh, kairos here as we make this wall of kairos together. And so, um, so that's something to do this morning, either during communion or after church, just to take time and like, and to make it a discipline for this fall season. When you're here, like you write something down, like you pay attention to your life and a question mark, like, I don't know, is totally appropriate to write too. Like, okay, God, I don't know what you're saying, but I would like to know. So just being in that, in that um, discipline, I invite you to be a part of that. And then um, the second uh, is just this week, Uh, the response to simply continue or begin letting kairos just be something that seeps into your awareness of what's possible during the day. To pay attention to the deeper levels of of possibility just in the regular everyday stuff of our lives. Uh, There is a kairos moment that happens in this text that we just read, at least one, right? So we read of this woman who's walking along. This woman, she's a mother, she's a widow, And she's just walking the road of her day, and in her grief, she's met by Jesus along the way, right? Maybe we can be people whose sensitivity is increased just a notch. It goes up just a little bit to notice, like the crowd, when we find ourselves in a place of holy mystery. When we are able to see, oh, look, God is at work among us. So that's, again, the practice this morning, writing it down, but then this week, have it on your radar. So take home an S-hook with you if you didn't two weeks ago. Take one home, put it on your dresser, put it hanging on the lamp by your bed, put it in the little cup holder in your car so you see it, just to remember that there are these hooks, there are ways in which God's trying to get our attention. So I commend those two practices to you. So that when I ask next week, if you've been paying attention to Kairos, you can be like, yes, yes, I have. <laughs> All right, so as we finish our time in Lectio together, just the fourth and final step of Lectio is simply just to remain, to dwell in the goodness of God, to remember who we are as the beloved of God, and to hold what we've heard spoken through the Bible, spoken through each other, all of it just being saturated in the presence of God, and to hear it as a word of grace and hope for us. For God most certainly speaks through us as a gift for each other. So as we remain and finish this holy time together, I um, invite you to close your eyes and just hold this sacred space for each other. The band's going to come back up and get ready. But I'm going to pray for us as we just remain with God together. So connect with the, that breath again. If it's comfortable for you, you can just open your palms on your lap, probably with that S hook resting there in your palm, uh, just feeling open. God, we do say thank you. As we open ourselves up, we thank you that you've met us here in this practice of listening and that you meet us along the way in our everyday running around lives. We see, too, the holy mystery of it all and how you are at work in the needs that we have, too. Thank you that there are so many ways in which you do work in us. And thank you for the practice of paying attention that draws us back to you, hearing how just stepping into, this, into scripture again, we hear how your story is unfolding in our story, hearing our own story in scripture and in the words that are shared with each other. It's breathtaking to experience you in this way. And in all of it, we hear a vibrant invitation to follow Jesus with this one wild and precious life that we've been given. So we do it now together by your grace and for your glory. Amen.